Before the homily begins, I would like to say that the reference to salt in today's gospel and my last name being Morton is purely coincidental. <laughs> What does it mean to be the salt of the earth? In the daily experience of most people, salt is used to season, purify, preserve. Salt never loses the saltiness, but it can become contaminated through a variety of pollutants that prevent the salt from functioning. Contaminated salt is useless and must be discarded the goal of every Christian must be to season, purify, and preserve the world through all authentic daily gospel living. Next, the followers of Jesus are to be the light of the world. Light, a rich image running through the entire Bible. The goal of Christian faith is to enlighten the world through words and actions about Jesus, the Messiah and the Son of God. Followers of Jesus have been enlightened so that they may in turn enlighten others. But that's not a license for arrogance. That's that's living a life of authentic Christian witness in and through the world. Our saltiness and our light are not aimed at self-indulgence. Our saintness and our light focus totally on Jesus Christ who is the source of all our meaning meaning for our lives. Perhaps this could be explained better by telling a story I heard more than a few years ago. It went like this. A Chicago high school student named Mike walked into the office of the consular. Mike was clearly excited about something and his counselor said, you look pumped up, Mike. And Mike said, I am pumped up. My dad impressed the heck out of me this morning. While I was eating my breakfast, he walked in with his briefcase, put his arm around me and said, have a good day at school, Mike. Then for some reason it dawned on me that he didn't have to be at work until 9 o'clock and it was only 7.45. Dad, I said, why do you always leave so early for the office? You don't have to be there until 9 o'clock. It takes only 10 minutes to get there. And my dad said, you're right, Mike, but I usually try to catch the 8 o'clock Mass at Holy Trinity on my way to work. That impressed me. It never occurred to me that he went to Mass on weekday mornings. He never mentioned it to me before. But what impressed me even more was that lately I'd been giving him static about having to go to church on Sunday. And he never said to me, look, Mike, I go every day. The least you can do is go on Sunday. He never threw that one at me. Then Mike grinned broadly and he said, I should go to daily Mass. It might give me a new outlook on Sunday Mass. That story illustrates beautifully one of the ways a father can carry out the teachings of Jesus. In verse 19, immediately following today's gospel reading, Jesus says, 
Whoever obeys the law and teaches others to do the same will be great in the kingdom of heaven. And Mike's father did that. He obeyed the law and in the process taught his son to do the same. And in addition to that, Mike's father taught his son in the best way possible, not by his words, but by his action. And what was so powerful about his action was that he didn't parade it before his son. He kept it in low profile, and that's what really impressed Mike. Now the story of Mike and his father illustrates what Jesus means in today's gospel when he says, you are like light. Your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Jesus isn't telling us, Jesus isn't telling us to parade our light before people. He's simply telling us that we should be a light to them. Now there's a big difference between parading our light and being a light. The story of Mike's father illustrates what that difference is. He didn't go to daily Mass to impress anyone. He did it simply as an act of love in response to Jesus who said to his disciples after the Last Supper, do this in memory of me. Now let's take a look at one final example of the difference between <clears throat> I can find it the difference between parading our light and being a light mother teresa of calcutta left a comfortable life in a european cloister to work among the very poor in india she didn't do this to be a good example to other people. She did it in response to Jesus' instruction, love one another just as I love you. She did it out of love. And it was this love that became a light for the whole world. It was this love that moved people so deeply. And now, and now deceased TV personality, I think it was Mother Angelica, once, once said about her, about Mother Teresa, I can't tell you how much I owe to Mother Teresa. She showed me Christianity in action. She showed me love in action. She showed me how the love of one person can start a tidal wave that can spread across the world. So certainly, certainly Mother Teresa is an illustration of what Jesus was talking about when he said, you are like light for the whole world. Your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Mother Teresa didn't set out to parade her light before people. She simply set out to love, and in loving, she became a light for the whole world.